Hello and welcome to St. Mary's Now, a partnership between the Enterprise newspaper and the Four Center TV video production program. I'm Raymond Graham. And I'm James King. And here's the latest news from the Enterprise. St. Mary's County residents came out last Thursday night where Brian Crosby introduced sponsored bills and specific pieces of legislation that he plans to support during the upcoming year's General Assembly session in Annapolis. Crosby stated that we want to set up a working capital fund, which is just a corpus of money that says if the invoice is proper and the agency approves of it. If you are a business of 15 or less employees, we will pay you in advance. When payment is finally issued, it goes back to replenishing the working capital fund and that will be an interest-bearing account. According to Crosby, adding this plan will help speed up the process for small businesses. A school official was looking for an additional $920,000 for construction projects at Green Holly and Dinard Elementary Schools after the state gave her less than she requested. Kim Howe, the school system's director of capital planning, had requested $4.6 million from the state's interagency commission on school construction, but received $3.7 million. Howe said she appealed the request, but she can't discuss the response until she informs the school board members. It's almost time for the counting to begin. On Tuesday, the county's Department of Land Use and Growth Management presented an updated report of the Census Complete Count Committee to the St. Mary's Commissioners. At a May 14th meeting, the commissioners had approved the formation of the Census Complete Count Committee, which aimed to develop and implement a community outreach strategy to encourage full participation in the 2020 U.S. Census. The committee brings awareness of the importance of the census to members of historically low response groups such as low-income households, homeless persons, children under five years of age, racial and ethnic minorities, undocumented immigrants, persons who do not speak English fluently, young mobile persons, LGBTQ persons, and those who may be angry at or distrust the government. Commissioners from Calvert, Charles, and St. Mary's counties met last Tuesday in Prince Frederick for a 90-minute meeting discussing transportation, EMS mutual aid, and the county's share of funding for the College of Southern Maryland. Thomas E. Tim Hutchins, president of the Calvert County Commissioners, said, it's significant any time you can get three boards of dis to discuss issues, rather, even though we didn't come to any specific takeaways. It really sets the stage for what we can do moving forward. St. Mary's County Commissioner John O'Connor has been working with state delegates to replace the Governor Thomas Johnson Bridge that connects St. Mary's and Calvert in collaboration with a company that specializes in bridges. Options will include tolls, a lease, or a tunnel that uses the current bridge for pedestrian and bicycle traffic. State estimates put the cost of a new four-lane bridge between $500 and $600 million, and at this rate should be finished in five years. Bragging rights were on the line as all three public high schools in St. Mary's County gathered to compete against one another on Monday night at St. Mary's College of Maryland's Michael P. O'Brien Athletics and Recreation Center's Aquatic Center with Chopticon, Great Mills, and Leonardtown squaring off in the Southern Maryland Athletic Conference tri-meet. It was a great meet, Raiders head coach Alex Marley said. I love having a meet local with all of the county teams. It is fun. The Raiders boys, 5-0 overall, earned two wins to remain unbeaten on the year by defeating Great Mills and Chopticon. Great Mills, 4-2, earned a split by topping the Braves 0-2. This news brief has been provided by the Enterprise. For more details, visit somdnews.com. Because schools are closed next week for winter break, this is our final news brief for 2019. St. Mary's now will return after schools reopen in January 2020. We wish everyone a safe and happy holiday. That's all we have for you on this edition of St. Mary's Now. I'm Raymond Graham. And I'm James King. Signing, signing off. off.